G'day guys, welcome back to another verbatim exercise. As usual, one of my volunteers has provided a verbatim for us. I'll read through it and then give you some feedback. So I'll just share the screen. Here we go, okay, let's go. Hello Julie, my name is Grace and I'm one of the chaplains here in the hospital. I come around and visit patients to say hello, see how they are and give them the opportunity to chat about anything. Hello, I remember you saw me last week. Today I'm not feeling the best. I'm just so upset as I have to go back to surgery this afternoon for my hip and I'm worried about how my partner will cope. I've had so much trouble with my knee replacement in the past and now this. I can see this is extremely distressful for you and so disappointing. Yes, I am so disappointed and concerned my partner will not take this well and I just feel I'm a nuisance. I understand that you're worried your partner will not take this well. Did, did he support you during your past surgeries? Yes, he did support me and was very good. Well, I'm sure he'll want to provide you with the same level of support as he seems to care about you very much and doesn't see you as being a nuisance. He would not be here if you felt any differently. Yeah, that's true. I didn't think of it like that. You're making me feel better already. Well, tell me more about how you're feeling. Well, I'm just so upset that this hip surgery didn't work. I question why it didn't and how much more God can put on me. I had a terrible time with my knee surgery and eventually got over that. And so I asked God to show me how I can serve him. And then my hip problem started. What does he want from me? I do believe in Jesus. And just before you came in, I was praying, asking for help to work all of this out. And there you appeared. Yes, I can see where you're coming from. And it's times like this that are extremely troubling, confusing and uncertain, leaving one to feel abandoned and alone. Yes, you're spot on. Why has this happened at this time when I asked for his guidance and to show me where I can serve him? Doesn't he want me? Look, it's very difficult when we can't see the answer to our prayers, but you can be reassured that he would have heard you and he's with you at this time. Often when we look back, we can see the answer to our prayers. I agree with what you're saying, and I feel Jesus is with me. That's great. Hold on to that and focus on yourself as you prepare for your surgery. The other stuff you can leave with God. He knows what's in your heart and when best to let you know how you can serve him. Thank you so much. You've given me great comfort, and I know I need to trust in Jesus and let him work it out. Okay, so that's the end of the conversation, guys. So here's the point where you should pause this video and ask yourself, how do you think the patient felt at the, the end of this? How would you have felt if you got the same responses? Um, what did you like? What didn't you like that Grace did? Um, and what responses would you have offered this patient? Okay. And then imagine that scenario yourself in response to what you say. What does the patient say? And then how do you respond? It's a great practice. Okay, so here's my feedback. Um, good introduction from the chaplain as usual. Uh, at P1, hello, I remember you saw me last week. Today I'm not feeling the best. I'm just so upset as I have to go back to surgery this afternoon for my hip and I'm worried about how my partner will cope. I've had so much trouble with my knee replacement in the past and now this. And the chaplain says, I can see this is extremely distressful, distressful for you and so disappointing. So that's not a bad response from the chaplain, pretty good. Um, the chaplain's picking up on the patient's disappointment that further surgery is required. They also could have responded to their concern for their partner or concern that the hip operation may not strike trouble like the knee operation did. But usually the patient will let us know what the ultimate concern for them is. So just again to show you that just in from what P1, what the patient said, there's a number of different things that I could choose to respond, knowing and trusting that the patient's going to then identify what the ultimate concern for her is with what she just said. And actually, she does that nicely here because she says, yes, I'm so disappointed and concerned my partner would not take this well. I just feel like I'm a nuisance. So that's that's her primary concern right now, Right. She mentioned our partner's going to cope. She's worried about what this is going to be like for the partner. And she's just feeling like a real nuisance, a burden. 
um, to the partner right now. Chaplain says, I understand that you're worried your partner will not take this well. Um, did he support you during your past surgeries? Okay. So as I said, you can see the patient identifies what her concerns are um, and that she's feeling like a cause of trouble and hassle for a partner. But the chap chaplain notes this. So the chaplain's response is a little bit parroting, um, basically repeating what the patient just already said. Um, and, and then comes up with an unnecessary question. Um, the past surgeries doesn't matter. How the partner cope with the past surgeries is irrelevant. Um, again, it, this demonstrates me demonstrates to me that the chaplain's uncomfortable, doesn't really know how to respond to this patient. And I'm not sure why that is. They might have, for example, just been in a situation with their own partner where they felt like a bit of a nuisance at some stage. And so um, this might have been a trigger for them. But asking about whether he supported you during the past surgeries is irrelevant and unnecessary, okay? And it would have been much better to respond to how someone feels um, about being a burden, you know, even something like that. It sounds like you feel like you're, you're going to be a burden. Something like that is as simple as that can be a response where this person will get the idea they're listening and they're trying to understand because this is her concern. Okay. I understand that you're worried your partner will not take this well. Did he support you during your past surgeries? Yes, he did support me. It was very good. Well, I'm sure he'll want to provide you with the same level of support as he seems he cares about you very much. Doesn't see you as being a nuisance. He would not be here if he felt any differently. So again, note as always, questions, unnecessary questions are answered. All right. Did he support you during your past surgeries? Yes, he did. See, people answer our questions. Okay. We take them out of the pit, take them back up to their head. And that's a very comfortable place for a lot of chaplains to be. And that's why they ask questions in a pastoral conversation. Irrelevant questions. Okay. The chaplain then offers a useless platitude about the odds of the partner um, being just as good a support as he was in the past. The chaplain then pretends to know what the partner is thinking. She says, you know, um, he doesn't see you as being a nuisance. We can't know that. Maybe he does. Maybe maybe the fact that she's unwell is a bit of a burden, is a bit of a nuisance. And that's okay. He can feel that. All right. Doesn't mean he doesn't love her. Doesn't mean he's not going to support her. But he can still find the whole situation an interruption to life and a pain in the neck, basically. But it is what it is. Doesn't mean he's not going to support her. Okay. Instead of responding to the feeling of this woman being a nuisance, the chaplain tries to platitude this lady. And platitudes never work. Listen, I know that the next response from the lady is yes, that's true. I didn't think of it like this. You're making me feel better already. Look, to me, this is just a person being polite. Um, you know, because you're not. You're not telling this lady anything that she can't imagine. If we go back here saying, I'm sure, well, I'm sure he'll want to provide you with the same level of support as he seems to care about you very much and doesn't see you as being a nuisance. That's just a figment of the chaplain's imagination. Okay. He would not be here if he felt any differently. That's not true. People remain in situations for a whole bunch of reasons. None of that was necessary. You know, none of that was necessary. None of that is understanding how this woman, rightly or wrongly, feels like she's a burden, a nuisance, a hassle to her partner. And that's what's concerning her. And instead of the chaplain hearing that and trying to understand what's it like to feel like you're a burden to somebody that you love, instead of that, she just, you know, fills the space with platitudes. Like, oh, no, you don't... No, he doesn't see you like that. Don't be silly. He loves you. He wouldn't be here if he didn't. You're thinking crazy thoughts, okay? So that's a normal response from people. In a pastoral conversation, we've got to do better than that. We've got to listen and understand, okay? Um, okay, so ERSA, um, when the chaplain says, tell me more about how you're feeling, yeah, this is... This is better. This is trying to salvage. This is bringing it back to the now. 
tell me more about how you're feeling right now. Um, as you see here, I think P4, uh, I wouldn't take that as true. I just think people are very polite. Um, I feel certain that it may have occurred to this patient that perhaps her partner doesn't think of her as a nuisance, but here she has just been nice. So yeah, she's probably on one hand thinking I'm a burden, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a nuisance. And then the other point saying, well, no, that's what a relationship's like. We support each other, you know, through good times and bad sickness and health. If it was him going through this, I'd be very supportive. So I'm sure he's going to support me. We love each other. So again, the patient would come up with all of this herself. She doesn't need the chaplain to offer these sort of platitudes. Um, but when asked about her feelings, it brings her back to the now. And right now, what she's upset about is the fact that the hip surgery didn't work. She questions why it didn't and how much more God can put on her. I had a terrible time with my knee surgery and eventually got over it. So that I asked God to show me how I can serve him. And then my hip problem started. I mean, what does he want from me? I do believe in Jesus. And just before you came in, I was praying, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I can see where you're coming from. And it's times like this that are extremely troubling, confusing and uncertain, leaving one to feel abandoned alone. Okay, so here the chaplain's trying to understand. But I think she's really missing what the patient is saying. I, I don't think the patient is really saying that God has abandoned her, only that she's not sure what God's up to in her life. You know? So you've got this situation where it's like, like what I hear fairly regularly in the hospital. I'm a good Christian person. Let me just let me just put some words in this lady's mouth. I'm a good Christian person. I pray. I have a relationship with Jesus. I read my Bible. I love the Lord. I love his children. I, I help out at church. Okay. So I'm upset. I had surgery and it didn't work. It's almost as though there's no Father God above me that loves me. You know, because why would a father God not help me through this hip surgery? It doesn't make any sense, you know. And then when I finally get through, you know, like I had a terrible time with my knee surgery, you know, like where was he then? Where was this loving God when I need him? I mean, in a sense, what's the point of the relationship, you know? Um, you know how it's supposed to work? I worship, I love, you help. And you weren't helping me because I had a knee operation and it went terribly. And just when I started to get over that, I go, all right, Lord, I'll forgive you. I'll forgive you that you didn't make that as smooth as it could be. Um, so let's just put that behind us and carry on. So how can I serve you? What can I do for you? And then I start getting hip problems. So for me, it's like sometimes there's, a, you know, there's this separation of ideas. There's this notion that we have this loving God, this loving father above us. And then there's our experience in life. And sometimes they don't match. It's like, where is this loving God in my life right now? What is the point of this relationship? What is the point of praying? I pray and nothing happens, you know? And so for me, it sounds like she's very confused about what God's up to in her life. So a response like, it sounds almost as though God was punishing you. Now, she may not feel God's punishing her. I'm not saying God's punishing her, but this is going to give her an opportunity to clarify. Now, she might say, no, no, I don't feel punished. I just feel confused as to why he's making me suffer so much. That's okay. All right. But I'm just saying it sounds as almost as like God's punishing you, or it sounds like heaven's being deaf to all your prayers you know, or tell me more about this God that doesn't hear your prayers and come to your aid when you need him, you know, something like that, because I just want to put it out there to give her the space to tell me more about this confusion, This because she's got this relationship with God and she's confused, okay? She's wondering how it all works. It doesn't seem to make any sense, and I want to give her the space and permission to Clarify that with me. She says, yes, you're spot on. Why has this happened at a time when I asked for his guidance and show me where I can serve him? Doesn't he want me? And the chaplain says, it's very difficult when we can't see the answer to our prayers, but you can be reassured that he would have heard you and he's with you at this time. Often when we look back, we can see the answer to our prayers. You know? Now, 
I agree with what the chaplain says, you know, that it is very difficult sometimes when we can't see that our prayer is being answered. And, you know, we know mentally, we know in our head that God is with us. He doesn't just disappear and come in and out of our lives. He's, he's with us. Um, we, we know that sort of consciously, mentally. Um, and, and there's many times even in my life when I, I'm able to look back and reflect on my journey to say, wow, I can really see the hand of God, you know, coming into my life, even at the time where things seem very dark and hopeless. Looking back, I can see, no, he had me. But even though I agree with what the chaplain said, it doesn't help to say this to someone who's in the dark. The same as in those times in my life when I was going through a dark time. If someone had said to me, look, just be reassured God's with you. He's got you. Don't worry. The time will come. You'll be able to see very clearly how, you know, he, he's had you through this time. I know that already. It just doesn't feel like that. It feels like I'm all alone. You know, people say, oh, have you heard about the footprint story with the footprints on the bed? Yeah, I have. But it doesn't feel like I'm being carried on the divine shoulders when I'm going through terrible times in my life. It feels like I'm alone in the valley of the shadow of death, surrounded by wolves, and the shepherd's nowhere to be seen. That's how it feels. So I want to respond to the feelings and the chaplain doesn't do this. She offers a platitude. And it's not any help, really, because we all know this consciously. But that's, like I said, we don't feel it. So we need to respond to where this lady is right now. A response like, it sounds like you're confused as to what God wants of you right now. Or it's so confusing when it seems like God's not listening to us. Okay? That's, that's what this woman needs. Not a platitude, not a fix. Okay. She says, I agree with what you're saying and I feel Jesus is with me. That's great. Hold on to that and focus on yourself as you prepare for your surgery. The other stuff you can leave with God. He knows what's in your heart and when best to let you know how you can serve him. Thank you so much. You've given me great comfort and I know I need to trust in Jesus and let him work it out. So to me, guys, eight is just another platitude. It's basically saying everything will be fine. That's great. Hold on to that. Focus on yourself. You know, I can see that on the surface, the patient's very happy with these platitudes, but there's nothing else she doesn't know herself than what the chaplain told her. Okay. So again, the chaplain's trying. The chaplain's really trying, but this is just a fixer, you know. Um, so yeah, again, Try not to do that when you're with somebody. Resist that stuff. They already know it. Resist that stuff. Just try and understand what it's like to feel like this God that you love and serve very faithfully doesn't seem to answer prayers, doesn't seem to show up when you need him, you know? Um, try and understand what that like. And, and any of us who've who are Christians, who have a relationship with God um, or in any faith. We all know what that feels like when it seems like our prayers aren't being answered, where it feels like, you know, um, life is, is being very unfair to us, very unjust, and we seem to be on our own. You know, sometimes I can say to the Lord, Lord, if this is how you treat your friends, I'm not surprised you have so few because that's what it feels like sometimes, okay? And trying to understand people when they're feeling like this and conveying that to them in our responses is going to be a lot more soothing and comforting than any platitude you can offer someone who already knows this, knows this stuff anyway. Okay, so let me just... Finish here. Stop sharing. Again, guys, let me know about your thoughts about that feedback. Let me know about any other responses you have. Um, email me any little verbatims you have yourself, any little interactions you'd like some feedback on. And, yeah, we'll continue to uh, study and learn together. All right. Thanks for joining me today. God bless.